Hello to you, Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here Thursday now, the 28th of September, 2023. On today's update, we will primarily focus on Philippe and newly formed Tropical Storm Arena. That gives us only four left to go. What do we have? Sean, Tammy, Vince, and Whitney, if I remember my names correctly. Four more. I think we might do it. We still have October and November to get through. We might actually use up the entire list of names during a very strong El Nino season. Wow, that just shows you how important the very warm Atlantic has been. And even the A score is up there. It's not like we've had a bunch of weak storms. I mean, yes, we have, but we've also had some pretty powerful ones as well. We'll look at a stat about that as we progress. All right. First of all, one year ago, not going to spend a lot of time on this because everyone else is and I think it can be overdone a little bit got to be careful because you got to remember this is the date too that people lost loved ones and so you just have to be careful and respectful and mindful of that fact but this infographic that CJ one of our back-end folks made for us just a reminder of what happened today a year ago Ian making landfall category 4 larger hurricane then was Charlie and so it produced a very catastrophic 14 plus foot storm surge portions of the Florida coastline of course we had equipment down there covering that incredible video from Max Olson in Fort Myers Beach and uh, our video from Fort Myers and elsewhere very well documented hurricane for sure unfortunately a lot of people documenting it themselves because they didn't evacuate that's a story for another day but yes, Ian is now cemented as the costliest hurricane in Florida's history, the second costliest in U.S. history, and at least 164 people died directly, maybe more, and certainly more afterwards from stress and other things. And it is a very deadly event and sort of remembering and hopefully learning from it in the future will be part of the legacy of this. So, you know, kind of a somber day. I think there's no way around it this very powerful event one year ago today. I certainly remember it, and certainly the folks in Florida will as well. So, CJ, thanks for making this graphic for us. Moving on to this graphic, nothing like that out there now. A little bit of moisture hanging around in the western Atlantic and in the eastern Gulf, but nothing concentrating. So nothing to worry about in terms of anything anywhere remotely resembling an Ian for the foreseeable future. But out in the Atlantic here, we've got this very unusual setup here of Philippe, we'll put a P there, and Rena now out here in the Atlantic. And then the question of what will happen. Wait until I show you the GFS. Quite remarkable what it is showing. Um, the National Hurricane Center forecasters definitely have their work cut out for them for this one, uh, this forecast period, really the next five to seven days as these two systems do the Fujiwara effect possibly. What is that? Well, we'll take a look at that in just a moment. First of all, here's the our version of the official forecast track. I mean, we literally take the coordinates from the National Hurricane Center and they are plotted thanks to the ever awesome Will Woodgate, one of our patrons who created this map for us. This is what the map looks like. But is this what's gonna actually happen? Double click it, it can zoom in a little bit here. And you can see they both kind of stay near each other, but I think there is a chance, and this is going to be really fascinating to see in real time, as in slow motion real time over the next few days, are they going to kind of go around each other in what is called the Fujiwara effect? And I'll show you what that means more in just a moment. Also, the southwest motion that is possible for Philippe, because you got to remember, two masses cannot occupy the same space in this universe maybe in some Marvel you know MCU as they call it the cinematic universe that can be a thing but not here and uh, too bad I don't have a direct line to uh, Neil uh, deGrasse Tyson and that his name up at New York City somewhere to have him talk about this you just can't do it they don't just merge into each other um, not really. So, you know, two masses, two pieces of mass just can't occupy the same space. So they kind of go around each other, and then the energy changes, and, and it's a very complicated thing. And it'll be really interesting to see how it unfolds 
over the next few days. But there is a chance that Philippe comes southwest enough that you might get some heavier rain and maybe some squalls. We'll just have to see. I mean, maybe it doesn't even do that in these two. Well, let me just show you the GFS. But before we get to the GFS, uh, let's go over to the National Weather Service site. I found this. Of course, they have definitions, which is great. The Fujiwara effect. When two hurricanes spinning in the same direction pass close enough to each other, they begin an intense dance around their common center. If one hurricane is a lot stronger than the other, the smaller one will orbit it and eventually come crashing into its vortex to be absorbed. Again, it would be great to have Neil on here, the astrophysicist, to talk about how galaxies do this. Um, I should tag him in today's update and on Twitter when I post the link there. Seriously, it would be really interesting to see because galaxies do this in outer space uh, as well, if, if you know astronomy. Anyway, um, the two storms closer in strength, if they are closer in strength, you know, they're more equal. They can gravitate towards each other until they reach a common point, and then they merge, or they merely spin around each other for a while before shooting off in their own paths. And in rare occasions, the effect is additive when the hurricanes come together, resulting, resulting in one larger storm. Now, larger just literally means bigger, not more intense. They didn't say some kind of a super storm. You know, there was a book by Art Bell and Whitley Strebel, Strebel? No, Whitley Strieber, the, the late Art Bell, called The Coming Global Superstorm, and we remember the day after tomorrow. Again, that's all Hollywood science fiction stuff. No, they don't combine, then you get this giant superstorm. They can be a, there can be a larger storm when it's all said and done with a large area of vorticity, but then it's got to work to concentrate that down, right? on this planet and with our physics. Today's a big physics thing, as if I'm really good at that kind of stuff. I did okay with it in college, but seriously, on our planet we have, uh, and in our universe here, the conservation of angular momentum. To get something intense, you've got to focus. You have to focus much smaller. Conservation of angular momentum, and we see it all the time. I've mentioned this numerous times over my career. Just picture a figure skater spinning, and then they bring their arms in and they go faster. That's what has to happen to have a more intense system, generally, right? I mean, there are ways to get around some parts of physics, but on our planet, generally the atmosphere responds with large systems having energy spread out over a large area, and it takes a while for it to concentrate down to something very intense, like we see with a singular hurricane out there. And this example would be Hillary in 2017 and Irwin 2017, right? So six years ago in the Eastern Pacific kind of danced around each other and off they went eventually into the Northeast Pacific. So the GFS is trying to give us quite the show here. Um, I guess blue will pop out best. There's Philippe. There's Rena. All right, so watch what happens here. This is the 850 millibar level of the atmosphere. So it gives us a good idea of that vorticity that I, vorticity that I was talking about. Um, you know, generally speaking, that's just a good framework for the lower 5,000 feet, the structure of these systems. So if I just play with the slider here, watch what happens. So it's really interesting. Within just three days, clearly the GFS makes Philippe stronger. You can just see that in the vorticity signature. It's much more dense and compact. Again, bundling that energy and becoming stronger. Rena tries and maybe intensifies some. So, I mean, let's just look down at the lower levels here, right? And I, I typically do this while I'm showing you. It's not like I look ahead and sort of know the answers ahead of time. This Sometimes I do, especially when it's really important. But a lot of times I'm discovering this with you all as I do it. Again, like I'm sitting here just discussing this with you personally. That's the way I look at these videos. And yes, it gets uh, Philippe down to 967. So that would be a fairly strong hurricane in this particular run of the GFS. So what happens after that 72-hour time frame? Well, let's see. So... Rena takes off. They're orbiting around each other, sort of the common 
center here is right there. Rena goes around the circulation to the north, weakens. Philippe stays intact, fairly strong, and finds that weakness, speaking of weaknesses, in the ridge up here. And it's going to make its way out, surprise, surprise, into the open Atlantic. Fairly formidable hurricane, according to the GFS here. Ten days from now, still out there, racking up those ace points, and that is about it. But look what happens with Rena in this scenario. There's Bermuda, and you say, well, that's really nothing to worry about. Well, that could be some very heavy rain, potentially. But just look at this large area of overall energy through here, and you've got these systems here, uh, Rena, Philippe, and just other energy or vorticity. I don't know what this nonsense is. It's just crazy. It really is. Now, let's go real quick and just look at one of the hurricane models. Let's see what our good friend, the H Wharf, is doing. And let's look at Philippe, all right? So this is from the 12Z. Or actually, they only did it to 6Z. I wonder why there was no 12Z. That's no good. So let's try the newer hurricane model, the HAFS, or the HAFS A. We'll use the parent. And let's see, we're not seeing, there's Philippe. And this was 12Z. Good. All right, so watch what happens here. So there's Philippe, not much with it. There's Rena, and a little bit more defined, I guess you could say. And if we move this out, this goes out to about five days. You see what happens? Just not much. I mean, it almost completely loses Philippe down there. The wind field is just bleh, right? Not much to it. And uh, this is the 10 meter wind and the mean sea level pressure, and really nothing at all becomes of either of them. Contrasting that to the GFS over here, uh, that was much more robust. And we got to go back to this, otherwise it's looking at the hurricane version of the model, and we don't want that. So the GFS is much more robust, of course, with both of these systems, at some point anyway, and especially, look at 942 for Philippe there. So a really fascinating scenario coming up for the science, I mean, seriously, it may not be interesting to people that are only interested in landfalls, but for those that are purists in the science of all of this, the modeling, how that interacts with everything and interprets it, yes, this is really going to be an interesting time ahead with all kinds of things going on. And we'll see, does the GFS just absolutely score, you know, the Hail Mary, so to speak, whatever analogy you can come up with, and nail this thing, that will be a remarkable thing to see. So we're going to certainly follow this closely over the next few days and see how it all turns out. I'm, I'm just very interested. Wow. All right, so Dr. Phil Klotzbach, interesting point that he brings up. If the current National Hurricane Center forecasts, plural there, for Philippe and Rena verify, through the next several days, the Atlantic will officially reach NOAA's definition of an above-average Atlantic hurricane season by October the 2nd. What does that definition mean, you ask? Phil gives us the answer. Noah's definition of an above average Atlantic season is an ace greater than, remember your math, 126.1. Currently, we're sitting at 121.5. Remember, I said recently that I think we're going to hit 200 before the season is said and done. I've only got 79 points to go. We shall see. Got a long way. Two months there. A few days left in September, but not really, right? But October and November, you never know. But we are well on our way to having an above average season on all metrics. It doesn't matter how you slice it in the face of the El Nino. And this is an interesting little tidbit, too, from Dr. Klotzbach, the two-week forecast he released today. You got the current setup. There is Philippe and Rena we've already discussed. The pattern right now, very, very unfavorable up here, as you'd expect, with strong westerly shear, but a very favorable pattern throughout this area right here. Interesting. And guess what? Philippe and Rena right there. Isn't that interesting? So the ace may get bumped up quite a bit. Um, and then just looking at the ensembles, a big mess with Philippe and Rena. Not much developing in this area that we typically look at in October, but on Monday we'll talk about October more 
and what we might expect in the month of October. We'll look at some Madden Julian oscillation stuff, a little bit of a hint of it here with the upward motion 200 millibar chart, these Hofmuller diagrams. Uh, just a little hint here from Dr. Klotzbach. Green generally means favorable, and for the most part, I mean, put it this way, we don't have any of this over in this part of the world uh, for the next couple of weeks or so, going out to October 13th. So generally favorable conditions in the Eastern Pacific and the Western Atlantic, including the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. Now, this next part, very, very important. Um, not tropically related necessarily, but enough people watch this video. We're all into the weather, I would assume. A potential flood event is going to happen tomorrow for our friends up in the densely populated area of the Northeast. Currently, the Weather Prediction Center, the WPC, has the slight risk of excessive rainfall indicated for New Jersey, all the way up to the big population areas, Newark to New York City, all the boroughs into the lower Hudson Valley. This could be very, very problematic because it is a small event. It's not one giant rain shield coming up where all the models are on it. It's not an Ida coming. Even that was hard to forecast. This is going to be tricky, and you're going to have to really pay attention. This is one of those things where I need you to focus, and you need to make sure people are paying attention to their favorite and most trusted weather source tomorrow in this part of the country. I'm very, very serious about this. We could get some extremely high rain rates, and in this area, the flooding could happen quickly. You get basement flooding, and in parts of the Hudson Valley, it doesn't take much at all, and you can get some serious flash flooding in very short order. Our friend over here on the internet, Yakov, talking about it with other folks on Twitter, and it's you know the risk is definitely starting to grow, but nailing it down to where that's going to be really difficult. So just everybody up here needs to focus on this tomorrow. Amongst all the other things in your lives that are going on, I need you to pay attention to the weather here. And I mean, hey, just follow some of these folks. You can follow Yakov on Twitter. Uh, very sensible stuff. Storm Chaser JS. I mean, these are people that are into this stuff. They don't hype it up, and they're excited about it without being ridiculous, right? And that is a good thing. You want people that are passionate, but also factual. So coming up tomorrow, this is going to be a big deal, and I bet that they go to moderate as they start to nail down some of the more details you know, of the particular rainfall amounts and who could get impacted. So not directly related to the tropics at all, but a potentially high impact event. So pay attention, all right? All right, that's it for me for today. Interesting few days coming up. I, for one, am very excited about it. We shall see what happens, especially since these are out in the open Atlantic and they won't bother anybody. We can be excited about that. Uh, from all of us at Hurricane Track, as always, thanks for tuning in. Again, I'm Mark Suddeth. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.